Well, America isn't the only country with a major political split over the question of who comes in and under what circumstance. It's not the only country where its leaders baldly lie to its own people about the effects of that immigration. Yesterday, for example, in Sweden, a police station was hit by a grenade attack. That's more common than it has been. Explosive attacks have, well, exploded in the past few years as Sweden has welcomed a massive number of immigrants into its once famously placid society. This has caused a lot of effects, some of them political. We recently spoke to a man called Hanif Bali. He's an Iranian immigrant to Sweden who, maybe unlikely as it is, has become a leader, a celebrated one, in the push for tougher immigration laws there. Watch. What is the problem with Sweden's immigration system now? So there are many problems. It's very hard to define one. But the biggest problem is the amount of immigrants that are coming in. Uh, in the last couple of years, we have taken in about 250,000 uh, asylum seekers. And for comparison, that, that would be like uh, America taking in about eight or nine million uh, asylum seekers. This is people that Sweden provides housing, um, health care, schooling, uh, and all these big, a lot of these expensive services that the Swedish welfare system uh, uh, gives to people. And this has created, of course, a lot of huge costs in the short run for the Swedish system. But also, when we look at long term, what we're seeing now with crime and poverty is the effects of having a very lax migration system uh, for 10, 15 years ago. And what we're seeing now with with uh, basically ghettos and uh, street gangs, which is a phenomenon that haven't been never even heard of in Sweden, uh, and also uh, jihadists uh, traveling abroad, etc. These are problems that are new to Sweden, and Sweden's system is not capable of, you know, it's not capable and it's not designed to handle these problems. For example, in unemployment, I mean, in 2006, about 20 percent of uh, people unemployed were, were immigrants and foreign-born. Today, that number is up to 60 percent. So you are an immigrant from a Muslim family, and yet you've taken a hard line against Muslim immigration, mass immigration from uh, Muslim countries. What's the response been to you? If we want to help people, and that is truly what we want to do, you cannot put so much pressure to the system that the, pr uh, that the system collapses under its own weight. And the response I've been having, to, uh, because I'm, you know, merely putting this statement out that's saying, look, there's a limit to how my, many people you can, you can take in, uh, has been to call me basically uh, uh, Uncle Tom, a house nigger. I've been compared to Dr. Mengele, you know, the, 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 and this is not from random people on the street. These are people who have prominent posts in, in, in parties, in, in the left, in newspapers. And, and this is, of course, because I don't, you know, I don't tell them the, the wishful thinking that they uh, want to hear. Yes. Well, we're very familiar with that in this country. You're a brave man, and we wish you luck. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you.